My first impression of Soldier's Delight was pretty dismal. It looks to be exactly what it is, barren and inhospitable. But to understand the importance of these last surviving 1,000 acres from what was once 150,000, you need to go back in time 500 million years when the Earth had only one continent called Pangaea. In the beginning, the Africa we now know across the ocean was actually part of North America that we now know. Violent Vulcan activity divided Pangaea into the continents we now know, and the activity hurled them in opposing directions. When Africa and North America were pushed away from each other, volcanic activity under the ocean lifted a portion of the ocean's floor bed and hurled a deposit of serpentine rock and soil onto North America, a sort of bon voyage gift. Narrow ridges of serpentine rock run in a broken trail procession along the east coast from Canada to the lower United States. Soldier's Delight bears one of the thickest areas of serpentine rocks and serpentine sand soil. This is a hydrated, ultramafic rock containing heavy metals such as chromium and nickel and high in magnesium and iron. But it's the chromium that made Soldier's Delight a main attraction between 1820 to 1917. Serpentine soils do not hold the kind of nutrients that support most plants and trees, but savanna grass grows well and because the serpentine section is a narrow island or kind of a land sandbar surrounded by more typical mid-Atlantic soils, it was considered ideal by early settlers, at least for grazing. My second impression of the Soldier's Delight Barrens was what I had encountered in other desert regions such as in Tucson, Arizona, and even the edges of the desert uh, in Benghazi, Libya, and in Egypt. But there is a very great difference in the joining climates. African arid desert areas receive very little rainfall, and these are usually during specific seasons. The arid areas in both the African locations and in Arizona and California are also many to hundreds of miles wide and the mineral structure very different. On the other hand, the serpentine ridges along the east coast have a very narrow and broken path and the climate along that path is anything but dry. Soldier's Delight Serpentine Barrens receives the same rain as that which falls on either side and the climate is temperate. The result is that some very unusual and endangered plants and animals live in that very narrow sandbar. Instead of being an oasis, the serpentine ridge is actually the bar slithering down the middle of a continental oasis on either side of it. Based on a study of materials collected from historical correspondence, William Bose Marie of the Maryland Historical Society noted that from 1580 to 1652 the serpentine bedrock area was almost the sole hunting area for the Susquehannock Indians. In the autumn the natives would start circular fires to drive and then corral wild game into a central area where they could easily harvest them. One of the largest jewels of the serpentine barrens was the chromite it contained. It ended up being the world's largest source, especially when the Siberian mines were depleted. One of the chromite mines is located still at Soldier's Delight, but is no longer mined at all. But it was very actively mined between the 1820s and the 1880s, closed down for a period of time, and reopened during World War I for a couple years between 1915 to 1917 when North America's other sources were too dangerous to access. A gentleman by the name of Isaac Tyson Jr. bought up all of the serpentine barons he could get his hands on from Pennsylvania, Maryland, and down into Virginia in the late 1820s and started mining on Soldier's Light in 1827. He actually cornered the world's market completely and obviously became a very wealthy man. The Soldier's Delight Barrens is undergoing now an extensive restoration to remove invasive species that have moved in during the last 70 years. 
and to then bring back the native plants that adapt to fire as they were in the beginning. As an added note to those who may be interested, volunteers are actively sought and greatly needed.